Have you guys ever played a video game where going into your playthrough of it, you just have zero expectations? So you're not going to be disappointed, really, if you don't end up liking it. You don't really have any expectations of it being one of the greatest games you've ever played or even something you genuinely enjoy. Like, you're just going in to play it just to say you played it and you're not even expecting to like it. Well, recently, that's what happened with me, is I went into the Modern Warfare 3 campaign expecting to absolutely hate it. Because after completing Modern Warfare 2 2022, I realized that the likelihood of me ever enjoying a Modern Warfare campaign died with the original Modern Warfare 3 back in 2011, which is one of my favorite Call of Duty campaigns of all time. And the Modern Warfare franchise has continued to disappoint me in terms of the reboot series. And after playing Modern Warfare 2 2022's campaign, which is one of the worst Call of Duty campaigns, if not the worst, and probably one of the worst first person shooter campaigns I've ever sat through my entire life, you know, after that, I just, I have zero expectations going in, but somehow after completing Modern Warfare 3's campaign, I'm walking away even more disappointed than I could have ever expected, and honestly, just downright angry in some regards, that I just sat through that absolute fucking slop for the three hour runtime, two of which are fucking cutscenes, dude. Dude, two thirds of this campaign, if you even can call it that, are fucking cutscenes, bro. And the gameplay that is there, all one hour of it, is not even that fucking good in the first place. So let's go ahead and get into this, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and break this review up into different various segments. Obviously, there will be spoilers throughout, which I don't really think anybody cares about Call of Duty spoilers. I mean, shit. Go spend two to three hours, beat the campaign for yourself, and then you know, come back to the video and see if you agree with me. We're not talking about a large time commitment here, but let's go ahead and kick this off and talk about gameplay because, you know, there really isn't too much to discuss here. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. So let's talk about this one hour of gameplay that you're going to be experiencing. What you're going to be playing is essentially two different mission types, actually three if you count the one-off mission, but there's two main mission types. There's one mission type where it's the traditional linear COD campaign. There's about two or three of those missions in this game. That's it. The rest fall into this category of an open environment, war zone esque style mission, where you essentially, in some cases, literally drop in with your fucking glider, pick up a bunch of guns on the ground that are scattered across the different areas that you're exploring, and you have a couple of different key objectives to attack in whatever order you want to. You can choose to play the game stealthy, you can play it guns blazing, which that aspect I kind of like how you could pick your pacing, so to say, but these Warzone-esque missions feel horrible, man. They feel so out of place in a single-player campaign because the entire time you're just thinking, dude, this is literally some cheap-ass Warzone event that they tried to relabel as a campaign and just inserted a shitload of cutscenes in between in order to make it feel that way. I just, like, it never felt good. I never liked it. I would have preferred the more linear gameplay style and just over-the-top set-piece action that you've grown accustomed to in Call of Duty. And the reason why this is also the case, too, is because when you think about your favorite Call of Duty missions, like, you kind of have in your mind, like, the guns that you used during those missions because when you booted up those missions, you were equipped for whatever job you were going in to do. Like, you had a loadout that was perfectly catered in most cases to the different challenges you would face within that mission. Now, of course, you would pick up guns when you needed ammo or whatever throughout, but you had that initial like starting lineup of equipment that was perfectly catered to the task at hand. Well, given this war zone nature of a lot of these missions and given the fact that you can kind of tackle them in whatever way you want to, you don't really have any mission identity with a lot of these because people are going to play them completely different. You feel as a special operator, which this was super immersion breaking for me, which I know immersion in a COD game, I know it's kind of laughable, but you know, you're supposed to be a fucking walking badass in a COD 
COD campaign, but I really felt under-equipped for most of these missions. Like, you know, Task Force 141 is supposed to be like top-tier special ops motherfuckers that go in there and get shit done, and I never felt like I was properly equipped in a lot of these missions because the nature of how they're set up. So the game doesn't know whether to give you like a stealth build or a run and gun build or an LMG build, a medium range build. And what happens is, is a lot of times you just run around the map like a chicken with your head cut off, looking for the guns scattered across the map, pieces of equipment, kill streaks, armor upgrades, armor plates, whatever it is you need in particular, trying to find this stuff in order to actually get a loadout that is catered to the way you want to approach the mission. And it makes the game just very forgettable for most of these missions. And another aggravating aspect of it is the fact that because these are massive war zone size maps, essentially, you have a situation because for whatever fucking reason, I don't understand it. The Modern Warfare Modern campaigns are obsessed with body armor. I fucking hate it. It ruined Spec Ops. It ruined the other campaigns for me. And it is alive and well in this game and even more cancerous in a lot of cases than ever before because what happens on these larger maps, especially if you're playing a more action-focused gameplay style, is you try to ping enemies from like a pretty far distance away, but you find out that they have body armor. Well, guess what? A lot of them have long range weaponry and will absolutely fucking beam you regardless of how far away you are from them and will kill you extremely quickly. And there's no realistic way for you to dump an entire magazine of ammunition into them from a hundred yards away. So. It's just very annoying and there's a lot of situations like that where you're literally trying to fucking empty an entire mag into a guy who's standing like 50 yards away from you and is just tanking the hits because of his body armor. And it just absolutely does not work. It makes that frustration felt with the body armor in previous campaigns exponentially worse. And on top of that, they added a new type of body armor to the snow missions called thermal camo. Take cover, came from the trees dead ahead. Anyone have visual? Negative, nothing on thermals. Using thermal camo. And what this is, is the typical body armor, but they give it to snipers that sit off in the distance, in the snow, prone, and they're invisible to thermal sights. So they're almost impossible to see, and when you finally do actually find them, you know, you have to empty an entire magazine into them before you can reasonably get a kill without them first sniping you while peeking out of cover to empty that entire magazine of ammunition into them. So that aspect of the game, if it aggravated you before, is alive and well and worse than ever before in a lot of cases, which is just exponentially made even worse by the fact that you don't have a specific build catered to that situation like you typically would in a Call of Duty mission. So I don't think this new Warzone type of mission structure works. I know why they went with that mission structure in this game. It's to basically serve as baby's first Warzone match and acclimate people to the different mechanics of Warzone to kind of feed them into that pipeline of playing Warzone from the campaign. And on top of that, these campaign missions were originally planned to be in-game events for Warzone and DMZ within Modern Warfare 2 throughout the first couple seasons of Modern Warfare to post launch that eventually got scrapped and then they decided to roll those missions over into the campaign we have here today called Modern Warfare 3. So yeah, I would say the majority of these missions are extremely forgettable, bland, and overall result in you collecting three to four items per mission before you go to the exfil point and, you know, rinse and repeat. That is essentially the mission structure of this game. It's never really fun. The linear missions that are there I thought were actually pretty enjoyable for the most part, aside from the body armor armor aspect, but only three of the 13 campaign missions in this game fall into that category. So the vast majority of the time, you're going to be spending it in those Warzone-esque type settings, you know, that just feel completely out of place in a typical Call of Duty campaign. But a positive aspect about this campaign is they got rid of all those shitty fucking escort missions where you have to use the cameras to guide people. That's pretty much gone. There is one camera segment in this game and it lasts for 20 seconds. Thank fucking 
fucking god it is not bad whatsoever it involves you rewinding footage and that's about it so luckily all those shitty camera escort missions are fucking gone hallelujah so that is definitely a positive i wanted to point out also the ac-130 mission in this game is greatly improved man in modern warfare 2 that ac-130 mission was fucking horrible now this one is great it's basically non-stop action you're always going to have something to shoot at you don't have to watch for like fucking gardener sheds and stupid things of that nature you know it's a much more traditional call of duty ac-130 mission where the primary goal is just to kill as many people in a shorter period of time as possible now i did run into some aggravations like at one point a sam site was launching missiles at me and i was supposed to take it out before i got shot down and well the camera completely locked up and wouldn't let me actually aim at it so i ended up dying there but luckily i reloaded it took it out first before the camera changed and it wasn't an issue moving forward but i will say the mission did kind of draw out a little bit too long i think with those kind of gimmicky missions where you're in like a really powerful kill streak you know it's better to kind of adopt the principle of less is more like five maybe ten minutes i think is the perfect amount of time you want to spend in something like that and it just felt like it was getting a little bit too drawn out towards the end and the novelty was starting to wear off but aside from that the ac-130 mission this time around is actually really enjoyable which was nice and i will say there is one mission in this game that is a literal fucking walking sim and no you literally just walk in to a military base steal a key card and then then walk inside of a main building like it is a literal straight out of a sony game walking simulator mission that serves zero fucking purpose and doesn't even need to be in the game in the first place but i'm guessing they wanted to add another female character that they can say you play as during the campaign for those beautiful esg points that microsoft cares so greatly about i guess they were trying to make themselves look good in preparation for their new owners and everything considering that activision is now owned by microsoft so, you know, they had the past year to make themselves look as good as possible for their new bosses, but it felt completely out of place and completely unnecessary. Overall, I would say gameplay is a massive L, especially just given the campaign structure. I don't think it works well. And this Warzone feel to the campaign needs to fucking die as quickly as it arrived, man. Get that shit out of here and give us that traditional action-packed linear style Call of Duty campaign with awesome set piece after awesome set piece piece i think that is the way to go and hopefully we will get that return to form at some point but these modern warfare games seem to have no interest in doing so and have just gotten progressively worse in my opinion in that aspect so with that said guys let's go ahead and move to arguably the worst fucking part of this game and that is the story mission failed we'll get them next time before we get into specifics, I just want to touch on something real quick here. The story of these new Modern Warfare games, I feel like, is the weakest part of them because the original Modern Warfare trilogy was so incredible. I mean, it's literally an international espionage tale of intertwined intelligence agencies, military operations, and different, I guess, political move makers across the world that leads up to the culmination of an event that different different factions within those different countries and groups are pulling for that is World War III. And it just does something so incredible that I absolutely love about that trilogy is that it allows for these amazing combat encounters across so many different and unique situations, environments, and overall experiences across the campaigns. It truly is amazing at how well those campaigns hold your attention because every single mission is so unique from the last and it constantly gives you just this amazing adrenaline rush of constant action intrigue and amazing characters all in one in a short four to five hour format that's primarily gameplay driven and they truly were special man and these new modern warfare campaigns are nothing like the originals they're extremely scaled back the overall campaign of one of these games feels like one campaign mission from one of the old modern Modern Warfare games stretched out to be its own campaign essentially. In these new Modern Warfare campaigns, you never actually get to feel the scale and impact of what you're doing actually has on the overall world. And I think that's what was really effective about the original trilogy, for example, is you would kind of play as like the generic day-to-day -day soldier.
Ranger that would have to deal with the ramifications of something that occurred in a mission you played as Captain Price. Like in Modern Warfare 2, for example, when the EMP gets fired on that sub-base mission, you know, you will immediately go to Washington, D.C. and see the effects of the EMP, like raining down helicopters. You lose your red dot sight. There's no electricity anywhere. All the vehicles are completely stopped in their tracks. Like, it felt impactful. What you were doing in the campaign wasn't just some, you know, obscure idea like, oh, a missile blew up. Okay, well, what does that mean? You never actually get that scope, and I think that's what's being lost here, is this hyper fixation on the main characters of the Modern Warfare campaign without taking that step back and looking at the ramifications of the actions that are taking place throughout the campaign make everything feel so much less impactful, and it gives you essentially this idea that none of the shit you're doing really fucking matters, and and essentially it's one glorified campaign mission because you never get that zoomed out view of what exactly is happening as a result of what you're doing in each of these missions. And for that reason, I think it absolutely kills the pacing. Modern Warfare 2019 was miserable for me to sit through in terms of pacing. Modern Warfare 2 only made it fucking worse. And Modern Warfare 3 is probably the worst Call of Duty storyline I have ever seen in a Call of Duty game. And yes, I I am even including Black Ops 3 in that list. You know, you have been redeemed, Black Ops 3, because the story in this game is laughably bad and just overall horrible, man. I don't know what fucking intern they got to write this shit on their lunch break one day, and they had like 20 minutes to come up with the plot line, because that's exactly what this feels like. It is completely half-assed, nothing feels well thought out, and overall it just seems like a complete and total fucking joke from start to finish, especially the way that it handles key character interactions and development just horribly throughout, man. Like, I'm talking Last of Us 2 levels of disrespect thrown at particular characters within this game. But let's go ahead and get into this plot synopsis. Mission failed. We'll get next time. Now, the campaign starts on a pretty high note, in all honesty, with one of my personal favorite missions from the game, and it was downright fun, in all honesty. Like, if the whole campaign was like this, I probably would have really enjoyed it, but essentially, it's called Operation 627, which is in reference to the mission in Modern Warfare 2, the original, where you have to rescue Prisoner 627 from the Gulag. But, in a twist of fate, it turns out that you're not rescuing Price this time around. You are actually rescuing Makarov himself in his suit and everything looking fly as a motherfucker. This is a very fucking fun mission and overall I really enjoyed it. Makarov is actually a very well done character in this game. I actually really liked him a lot more so than even the original Makarov so I guess props for that but essentially you rescue him from the gulag and escape in some boats. Now after this mission concludes we get to one of the lowest points in the game. Go figure man it's like a roller coaster only it's not fun. But at this point, you get to start playing as Mia Khalifa without the boob job and a massive fucking nose. Well, I guess Mia Khalifa also has a massive fucking nose. But you get to play as everyone's favorite heroine in the Call of Duty universe, and that, of course, is none other than Farah. And just like in the previous two Call of Duty Modern Warfare games, she is completely insufferable, obnoxious, has a boss bitch attitude, and is literally the epitome of a woke, ESG-friendly female player character who is a strong Arab woman in the Middle East in a Muslim country that is somehow the leader of a militant faction because if there's one thing we know about the Middle East it's that men respect women to the point of letting them lead them into battle is this her lesbian lover not anymore They shot the wrong person, man. But yeah, Farah is an absolute Mary Sue within the fucking Call of Duty franchise, and she's extremely unlikable, and if you didn't like her in the previous games, luckily she's not a prominent playable character this time around. You do play a couple missions as her, but they're pretty quick, thankfully, and yeah. 
At this point, she doesn't even need to be in the story and literally served no fucking purpose whatsoever other than to add a little bit more diversity to Task Force 141. But essentially, in this mission, you go and put some tracking devices on Farah's shipment of, like, secret arms or whatever, which are, like, missiles that she got from General Shepard. So you put these tracking devices on the different shipments in order to locate them and, I guess, track their location, man. It's a tracker, whatever. Moving on, you go to the next mission where you drop in Fortnite style to a nuclear power plant as Captain Price. You parachute in and you go and stop Makarov from taking his canisters of poisonous gas, which is basically Nova 6 from Black Ops, and leaving the power plant with it for unknown purposes. But when you get inside, a helicopter is already taking off with the gas on a pallet, and even if you try to shoot it with an RPG, if you have one, the RPG conveniently curve in a different direction entirely like the helicopter is protected by some invisible fucking gravitational field and all of your shots miss, allowing the helicopter to get away and prolong the plot just a little bit longer. So you eventually repel out of the same rooftop that the helicopter lifted the gas canisters out of in the first place, and you continue on to the next mission, which is basically you again as Price, and you meet up with Farah in order to track down her stolen missiles. Only when you get there, you find out that these aren't the same missiles, essentially, that were stolen. There's something different about them. In fact, they contain the very same gas canisters that Makarov had taken from the power plant in the mission before, and you try to stop the launch of this missile, only to find out that there are two others that launch towards military targets in order to provoke Russia and the West into getting into a war with each other. But now we're brought to the walking simulator segment of this game, where you play as the CIA operative Laswell, and you are disguised as a soldier, and you are tasked with infiltrating a Russian base to meet with a Russian asset known as Yuri, which is, you know, a throwback to the original Modern Warfare trilogy. But once you get there, you literally just have to blend in, essentially, and walk through inconspicuously with your weapon hidden until you can eventually follow an officer into his office in which you get to actually kill two people for the entirety of the mission. You take his key card and walk into the building and go meet with Yuri for like a minute or two and then the gas attack that was launched in the previous mission hits that particular base and you have to evacuate from it as soon as possible because people are dropping left and right all around you dying from the effects of the toxic gas. Of course Laswell makes it out because she has literal iron lungs apparently and the fumes of toxic gas don't affect her unlike everyone fucking else on the base but yeah she makes her dramatic escape by jumping into a helicopter and we are greeted with a crotch shot. Unfortunately, she was not wearing a dress. So in the next mission, we get to probably the most disappointing aspect of this entire game and probably the part of the game that people were looking forward to the most. And when I saw it for myself, I cannot believe they even tried to hype this shit up because it's a fucking joke, bro. It's nowhere near what anyone was probably hoping for. And it makes the original No Russian just even more fucking legendary at this point because we have now arrived at the long anticipated No Russian mission or as it's called in this game, Passenger. And unlike the original No Russian mission, you don't even get to play as one of the attackers. Instead, you play as a woman who is a former ULF fighter that fought side by side with Farah and her all-female regiment to liberate the country. But essentially, one of the Russian guys who is on the plane with a 3D printed gun straps a bomb to your chest in order to make it look like the ULF orchestrated the entire terrorist attack and she died as a suicide bomber taking the plane 
plane down simultaneously, which doesn't really make any sense because they go to great lengths to show and like the teaser of No Russian in Modern Warfare 2 of how intricately they put together the plan of sneaking on gun parts onto the plane in order to actually be able to bring them on in the first place, but somehow they managed to smuggle a whole ass suicide vest that's perfectly intact and completely fucking obvious onto the plane with zero effort, so why couldn't they have just brought regular guns? Like, the whole thing doesn't really make sense. So, that's basically the setup of the no Russian equivalency in this game. It isn't fun, and at one point, the Russian tosses the phone that could disarm the bomb into the crowd of people and gives her a 3D printed gun with the suicide vest on, so it makes it look like she is one of the terrorists, and when she goes to get the phone to stop the explosion from happening, the crowd attacks her thinking that she's going to shoot at them. So, I guess the setup's not entirely stupid, but it just, it's nowhere near, I think, what people were hoping for, because the original No Russian was so edgy, even for 2009, it sent shockwaves through the mainstream media, like, it was insanely influential. And while I probably know that no other campaign mission from a Call of Duty game is probably ever gonna reach that level ever again, I would have really liked it to be a little bit more hands-on, let's say, especially considering what happens later in the fucking campaign, which is literally probably the biggest cock tease of all time. But after this mission and the plane blows up, you go and play as Farah, of course, and guess what you get to do? You get to go and pick up cell phones from the wreckage of the flight that got blown up in order to attempt to prove her friend's innocence, which to no avail, the only evidence they find makes it look like she committed the attack herself. Now, this is where I mentioned the cock tease, because you go to this mission called Flashpoint, which turns out to be the actual no Russian mission in this game, which is actually a flashback four years ago where Price is explaining how he once had Makarov in his custody and actually let him live, and basically that's what led up to the events that we're dealing with right now. But in this mission, Makarov and his guys are dressed up as police officers, and they're basically blowing up and killing every single person inside of a soccer stadium. And once again, instead of actually getting to take a place in the driver's seat of the bad guys literally just massacring all these people, you're playing as Soap and Price, and you have to stop this attack, and basically it leads to you capturing Makarov at one point, to the point where you're literally slapping him on the ass for like a solid five minutes. You are as well. Go leading him out of the stadium until eventually you put him on a helicopter and into custody, and instead of killing him on the spot, Price decides it's better for him to go to jail because even a fucking international terrorist like Makarov doesn't deserve to die without a fair trial. Come on, you shut your mouth! Let me finish him. <laughs> John, we have him. He's in custody. He's not going anywhere. Stand down, Sergeant. I thought you were the good guys. You gon' rot in hell for this. You'll die in the gulag with the rest of the Russian rats. I'll be seeing you again, McTavish. I promise. But it turns out he wanted to be arrested the entire time because he was serving as a distraction for the real target, which was the airport, which subsequently blows up as the helicopter flies away. So, yeah, I guess Makarov got exactly what he wanted in this particular situation, but because Price let him live instead of letting Soap put the chrome to his fucking dome like he wanted to on the helicopter, we are now dealing with the chain of events that is occurring right now in the campaign. Now, this mission was actually really cool. It would have been a great opportunity opportunity to take the role of the bad guys, and I don't know, it kind of feels cheap at the same time though, because it's so similar to No Russian, it's like, oh, the end goal is to kill a bunch of people at an airport, they just kind of do it in a different manner, so I liked the stadium idea initially, but then when they blew up the airport, I was like, oh, okay, they're really just trying to like, you know, one-up the original No Russian and make this just seem a little bit more extreme, because at one point you literally find Makarov in the back of an ambulance, which is a 
definite nod to the original No Russian because that's what they leave in in the first one, but you know, you get the point. Like it just kind of felt a little cheap in that regard and it just doesn't have that same impact when you're not actively playing a role in what's happening. That's what was so impactful and powerful about the first No Russian mission is because it puts you in a completely different perspective that you'd never really get to be in in these type of games and campaigns and that is the villain, the bad guy, the person who's slaughtering countless of innocent civilians. Like it really gave you that perspective and made you realize like holy shit this is actually a horrific attack but you know when you just see a bunch of screaming NPCs running away from you know people you're supposed to kill for them it doesn't really have the same oomph in my opinion but anyway I thought this was overall a pretty fun mission all things considered and yeah from there on we go back to current day so in the next mission of the campaign, you are playing as Soap, and you are going to infiltrate the, I guess, oceanfront property of Makarov's financier, Melina, and essentially she's Makarov's little fuck doll, it seems like, and she is in charge of all of his finances. So what you do when you get there is you take her captive, force her to log into Makarov's accounts, you drain all the money out of Makarov's account, which, you know, doesn't really matter because he already paid for everything, but somehow them threatening to drain her personal bank account is what pushes her over the edge and literally causes her to turn on Makarov revealing his location which is absolutely comical she's not afraid of giving away Makarov's money which keep in mind Makarov is one of the most well-connected resourceful people in the Call of Duty universe that can literally be anywhere be anyone and get to anyone but she has no problem giving away his money and then subsequently turning on him at the threat of losing losing her own money because she's afraid without her money she'll end up dead and she worked hard to earn it herself your accounts are wide open you're stealing from makarov's future not mine oh so mm. do you hear that i did let's make this personal we need to get off the x make this happen or we take her with us swiss national bank this is your personal account huh money's hardly been touched so we'll be Ты за кого, сука, себе принимаешь? Hmm, looks like we found that pressure point, boys. Let's drain it. Don't, don't you fucking dare. There's something wrong, Miss Romanova. I don't know Makarov's plans. I am a financier, nothing more. Give him your print. Or tell us where to find Makarov. Fuck you and that little birdie in your ear. That account is my money. I fought for it, I earned it. One more push and we got her. Last call, or he takes over. He'll know you were here. I'm as good as dead without my money. I need my money! We need Makarov. Where is he? Vostok! So Melina turns on Makarov and you get his location, which takes you to the next mission in which you play as Gaz and basically you're going through this kind of like high rise apartment building to go and get one of Makarov's right hand men named Nolan. And in this mission, it's actually pretty fun. I overall enjoyed this. It's got a really cool layout. There was one issue with it though, is like the way the level is set up is there's a ton of different zip lines and like rappel ropes you can use, but you don't actually get the rappel hell tool until the very end of the mission so you can't actually enjoy any of those aspects so it was a little oddly designed but aside from that this was actually a pretty fun mission you get in kill a bunch of people and then exfil with makarov's guy and overall it's a pretty fun campaign mission i don't really have any complaints so with makarov's right hand man captured you get enough information to go ahead and attack one of makarov's convoys which is carrying a secret prisoner who turns out to be none other than General Shepard. Can you ID? Stand by. <coughs> Steaming Jesus. No terrorist. What the fuck? So you fight your way through Makarov's goon squad until you eventually get to Exfil and basically it comes to the decision like Shepard has to decide does he want to leave that place or freeze to death but in exchange for getting on the helicopter he has to admit to all the shit he did and clear up Farah's name. You know, thank god we can all sleep easy at night. So after this mission you actually get to play as Ghost on this damn mission which is like an attempt to stop a false flag attack from Makarov blowing up the dam and poisoning the water supply. 
But the weird thing about this mission is the fact that it's not an actual sniper mission, which makes no sense considering the Ghost is like the second best sniper in the entire Call of Duty Modern Warfare universe, second only to Farah. I want everyone on this, including Farah. Next to Ghost, he's the best sniper I know. But what you're doing in this mission is essentially parachuting from bomb site to bomb site around the dam as ghosts, taking out enemies and hacking into the bomb to defuse them until you eventually have to run to the helicopter site in Xville. It is one of those Fortnite style missions and it is extremely underwhelming and kind of frustrating at times to locate where the actual bombs are. But from there, you stop the false flag attack and then you get to a pretty interesting mission where essentially Task Force 141 is trying to track down the gas canisters that Makarov has stored at an airport. And while well, this is the AC-130 mission in the game and you're playing as Graves this time around, who comes back in to support them. And overall, this is a pretty fun mission. Like I mentioned in the gameplay section, it does kind of draw out a little bit and there is some jank to it. But overall, this is a real AC-130 mission, unlike the one in Modern Warfare 2. And you're tasked with defending 141 as they search through the different areas of the airport for the gas canisters and defeating wave upon wave of enemies and vehicles and it is a lot of fun until eventually they get to the gas canisters defuse them you blow up the hangar and then you also blow up the helicopter that is believed to be carrying Makarov but before you're actually able to confirm whether or not he died in the explosion you have to leave the base because a large enemy force is closing in and you won't be able to evac after that point so everybody piles in on the helicopter and we begin the final mission. Now in this mission, it takes place in London, mate, and basically you are playing as Soap and Price throughout this mission. And what you have to do is rescue a train that Makarov has taken captive in the tunnel underneath the English Channel connecting England and France. He has 500 hostages essentially on the train, so you are tasked with going and getting those people out before he either collapses the tunnel or kills them off one by one, whatever it might be and a large chain of events takes you to this central location of the tunnel where the trains are and you find a bomb that you have to defuse and in the middle of this mission you have one of the dumbest fucking little bomb defusal mini game things that was completely unnecessary where soap is defusing the bomb and price has to interact with like a snake cam in order to feed him particular information to input in defusing the bomb and well lo and behold a guest who appears behind soap in the middle of him trying to defuse the bomb. That's right, it's none other than Makarov. It's wire. Red wire, got it. So That's a deal. Take this to hell with you, Captain. Never bury your enemies alive. And this is what I meant earlier by saying that they handle some of the key characters in just a disrespectful manner, equivalent to that of Joel in The Last of Us Part 2. End it. Now. Joel, get up. Joel, fucking get up. Please stop. Please don't shoot. Just please get up. No! No! Nice car. Perfect. In a seemingly completely inconsequential manner, Makarov basically puts the fucking chrome to Soap's dome instead of the other way around, which Soap wanted to do earlier in the campaign, which means that Price's decision to put him in prison instead of the ground was the fucking wrong one. Imagine that. You should kill fucking terrorists instead of putting them in a fucking jail cell so they can't get out one day and repeat what they've already done. But, you know, that's a controversial take in today's day and age. You know, the death penalty is too harsh. You know, if we were still tracking down 
down Osama bin Laden in today's current administration. Instead of killing him, they'd probably capture him and then put him in a psych ward or something like that to try and see what was wrong with him at a fundamental level because, you know, he's not an evil person. He's just a victim of his environment, you know? I'm sure that would be the fucking case, unfortunately, but yeah, should have fucking killed Makarov when you had the chance and now Soap's brains are painted all over the fucking subway floor. Unfortunate, man. I laughed hysterically when this happened because there was no lead up, there was no suspense, it was just completely fucking random and just completely pointless, dude. Like, the whole thing just felt so cheap and stupid and solely designed for shock value. But if you compare this to Soap's death in the original Modern Warfare 3, it's not even similar, man. Like, Price doesn't even react in this new one at all. Like, compare this to the original, man. Put pressure on the wound! Just rest. Get a medic! Come on, stay with me, son. Christ. That original scene is just way more powerful, conveys so much more emotion, and actually had a lead up that made logical sense in the progression of the story of why Soap died there in that particular instance, versus the new one where he literally dies for zero fucking reason whatsoever, and it's a complete and total fucking joke. But don't you guys worry, because from here on out, it only gets fucking worse, because like I mentioned earlier, it's not just one character, it's two characters that get handled in this particular manner because after you watch a little bit of the credits you're greeted with a post credit scene but going back after soap's brains are painted on the pavement makarov escapes and you defuse the bomb saving the day which this concludes the story of modern warfare 3 if you can even claim it's a fucking story whatsoever and the ending scene is literally ghost gaz and price spreading soap's ashes off the cliff of like the Scottish Highlands, I think, or something like that. I don't know, it was a pretty nice scene in all honesty, but you know, the lead up to his death felt so fucking pointless, it was hard to actually take it seriously. So like I mentioned, if you watch a little bit of the credits, you get to a post credit scene. And in this scene, it is General Shepard. I think you can guess where this is going. John. General. How did you get in here? I can't afford this shit! Meet your friend. I can't afford mm. this shit! That's well. You're better than this, Captain. Mm. We both will. This job is about making sacrifices for the greater good. Agreed. You got a body count of your own, John. It'll come back to haunt you. Oh, I am not gonna beg for my life. Not from you or anybody else, Captain. Wouldn't do you any good. And as you probably guessed, General Shepard gets his dome chromed. I guess, you know, Price finally learned his lesson that if somebody, you know, is evil or betrays you or whatever, you should go ahead and kill them versus putting them in prison or leaving them to the judicial system. I don't know, man. But it just felt really cheap, though. It's like, imagine comparing this. Again, compare this to the original scenario in which this takes place. Oh! 
So... So... It'll hold for now. Come on, get up. I thought I told you this was a one-way trip. Looks like it still is. They'll be looking for us, you know. Nikolai. We've got to get soap out of here. Nah. I know a place. Not only is it way more boring compared to the original, but the original death of General Shepard at the hand of Price is done in a gameplay segment. Like, you, the player, get to pull the knife out of your chest and throw it at fucking General Shepard's eye socket. Like, that was so fucking cool, man. Like, that's the way it should have been. They rob you of two of those moments within the last 10 minutes of the game. The death of Soap has zero fucking gameplay significance whatsoever. Nothing you're doing directly in the gameplay is part of the death of Soap. And then on top of that, you don't even get to kill General Shepard with your own hand. You get to watch it in a cutscene, just like the death of Soap. So that is one of my biggest issues. It robs the player of those key moments. Like instead of you being the one who gets to play the video game and actually shoot General Shepard once and for all and have that deed done by the actual player, it's just cheapened by the fact that you watch it in a fucking cutscene. Like why couldn't the player physically do that with his own hands and put a fucking hole in General Shepard's cranium, dude. Like, that would have been so much cooler, but no, we gotta watch it in a cutscene. And that is the biggest problem with this game. Too much of the significant plot advancement and key moments occurs in a cutscene instead of gameplay. Because if you compare the actual runtime of this game, which is about three to three and a half hours, to the overall amount of cutscenes in this game, it is literally 60% cutscenes for a Call of Duty campaign. That is absolutely fucking ridiculous, man. You are spending more time watching this game than actually playing it, and that is just borderline fucking unacceptable. And while I actually enjoyed these missions overall a lot more than I did Modern Warfare 2's campaign, because Modern Warfare 2's campaign had some of the worst gimmick missions I've ever fucking seen. Like, they were trying to be The Last of Us Part 2, which was so fucking awful with that shitty crafting bullshit and stealth, but anyway, I don't want to go on a rant on that, but I'm at the point now where I even like that campaign more than Modern Warfare 3's because at least I was primarily playing it. The game was a majority gameplay experience compared to Modern Warfare 3 that is a literal fucking movie game, dude. Who thought that Call of Duty would literally get to the point where we're watching it more than we're actually playing it? The whole point of a COD campaign is to play through an action movie through the perspective of the protagonist, not to fucking sit there and watch other people do the shit for you while you fucking stuff your face with Cheetos 
those and chug a bottle of Mountain Dew, man. I don't know. This was absolutely infuriating to me. This is the reason why I think it's one of the worst COD campaigns of all time, because you don't fucking play it. You play for an hour to an hour and a half in a three-hour campaign. That's horrible, man. What the fuck happened with this shit? So that, to me, is the primary reason why I absolutely fucking hate this campaign. I mean, not only is the writing terrible, you know, the character interactions are cringe, you know, Farrah's unbearable ass is still way too prominent in the storyline for no other reason than to pad the ESG resume, but overall, man, if I'm not playing a Call of Duty campaign, what the fuck is the point? Call of Duty campaigns have always been about the gameplay experience, and if I'm gonna call out other games for being fucking movie games and watching more than you're playing, I'm definitely gonna call this shit out, because I actually give a fuck about this franchise, and I'd actually like to see it be good once again. I would love to actually look forward to Call of Duty campaigns, especially in the fucking Modern Warfare franchise, which is my favorite first-person shooter franchise of all fucking time. So, it is just really irritating to me, and I know I sound like some fucking crazy person at this point, but dude, I just, I, I can't stress how much it irritates me, man. I want to like these games. I would love to look forward to COD campaigns once again, but I just cannot, dude. They have been so consistently shit over the past three entries. It's just absolutely sad, and overall, man, this campaign was a complete and total dumpster fire from a story perspective. I mean, shit, dude, the campaign was literally so bad that when I was finishing up the credits towards the end, my entire computer just started to crash, and I got a blue screen of death because the game shit the bed. I mean, even the fucking game in my computer acknowledged just how terrible that plot line was, man. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. So in conclusion, guys, I don't really think we need to touch on the typical COD stuff. If you like COD gameplay, if you like, you know, the COD graphical art style and things of that nature and how guns handle, you'll love this game in that regard. Mechanically, it's amazing. Graphically, it looks good. Performance-wise, I had a little bit of slowdowns here and there, but nothing really of any sort of note. But overall, man, I just, I wish I ended up liking this game. Like, I know I had zero expectations, but I think somewhere in the back of my head, I did still have, like, some expectations or I guess want and desire to be pleasantly surprised and overall it just it didn't materialize in fact the complete opposite materialized and I walked away even more disappointed than I could have possibly ever imagined and I just like <laughs> dude I don't know, man. I don't understand why they are so determined to make this new Modern Warfare plotline just so fucking horrible, dude. This campaign is an absolute fucking travesty and a absolute fucking disgrace to the Call of Duty campaign name, especially that of my favorite first-person shooter of all time, the original Modern Warfare 3. So if you're wondering if I would recommend this game at this point and whether or not you should play the campaign, I don't know what the fuck to tell you, man. I would avoid this shit personally. I mean, if you end up getting the game for multiplayer and find yourself really fucking bored for three hours and you want to play through a campaign to get some easy achievements or whatever it is, then I guess go for it. I would advise skipping the cutscenes personally because the story is completely uninteresting in all honesty outside of like the key moments where you're actually seeing Makarov do particular things in the cinematics. But overall, dude, if I had to give this game a rating, which I think this is the only appropriate rating I can think of. Since the campaign is three hours, since one third of the campaign is actual gameplay, and since the game of course is called Modern Warfare 3, I'm giving this fucking heaping pile of dog shit a 3 out of 10, man. Avoid this shit like the fucking plague, bro. But anyway guys, I want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video. Make sure to let me know your thoughts on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3's campaign in the comment section section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you still think I'm a Call of Duty shill, which is pretty fucking ironic that people think I'm a COD shill when literally I built my channel, basically complaining how much I fucking hated the World War II beta and how it was the first Call of Duty in my life I wasn't gonna buy? So yeah, I do find that very ironic. Also, Black Ops 3, 4, Cold War, and a couple others, Infinite Warfare, all of those games I absolutely fucking despise. And you know, I don't know, man. I don't really think I'm a COD shill personally, but I guess 
if you have a favorite franchise in general that other people don't agree with. That makes you a shill, apparently, but I'm more than capable of talking shit about my favorite franchise when it's warranted. Overall, I love the Call of Duty multiplayer experience. Hopefully, Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer can redeem it because that's the part I mainly care about, so the campaign is kind of like, eh, insignificant in the grand scheme of things, but holy shit, bro, it is a real shame what they have done to these modern Call of Duty campaigns, but anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it, and with that shit said, I will catch you guys next time.